please tell. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to present my study on self-care among type 2 diabetes patients at Teaching Hospital Karapitiya. Being an upper middle income country, Sri Lanka has the second highest prevalence of diabetes mellitus among the adults in the Southeast Asian region. Our current prevalence of diabetes mellitus is 10.7. However, a study has revealed that this prevalence varies among provinces. So this current prevalence is projected to rise up to 13.9 by 2030. What is self-care? Self-care is a broad concept which involves all aspects of promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative and palliative care where the patients, their families and communities has the ability to cope with their diseases and disabilities with or without the support of a healthcare provider. Since the patients and their families who live with the disease in their day-to-day -day life, self-care plays a major role in disease outcome. So the study aimed at describing self-care practices among type 2 diabetic patients attending diabetes clinic in teaching hospital Karapitiya and describing the social demographic factors associated with self-care among the study sample. We conducted a cross-sectional study among systematically recruited 456 patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus attending the teaching hospital Karapitiya. We used uh, Culturally Adapted Summary of Diabetes Self-Care Activities Tool to Assess Self-Care, which was interview administered, and another pre-tested questionnaire, interview administered questionnaire, to assess the social demographic factors. Moving on to the results, social demographic characteristics of the study population. The mean age of the participants was 55.7 years with a standard deviation of 7.6 years, and 56% 6 of the participants were in the 56 to 65 year age group. Three fourth of the participants were females. 57.9% of participants were residing in a rural area and 82.5% of them were currently married. 57.5% of them did not have a regular income and nearly two third of them were educated up to ordinary level examination. Diabetes mellitus status of the study population, 58.6% has had diabetes for more than 5 years and 84% of them were on oral hyperglycemic drugs for treatment, 45.6% of them has reported to have two or more comorbid medical conditions and hypertension was, and dyslipidemia were the commonest among them. Practice of diabetes self-care was assessed under physical activity, healthy diet, food care, taking medication, self-monitoring of blood glucose and smoking. Good physical activity was observed only among 15.6% of the participants. We defined good physical activity based on two factors. One is participation in at least 30 minutes of physical activity on 5 or more days per week and the other factor is participation in a specific exercise session other than the usual physical activity on 2 or more days per week. When both of these factors were fulfilled, it was taken as good physical activity. 30% of the patients has had a healthy diet as recommended on 5 or more days per week. Healthy diet was defined based on 5 factors. That was taking a healthful meal, following a diet plan, uh, taking less uh, high fat food, taking consuming more than 5 or more servings of fruit and vegetables and spacing carbohydrates evenly throughout the day. Food care was uh, Good food care was present among 55.3% of the presentation of patients on 5 or more days per week. Food, we assess food, food care based on five, 4 items that was checking feet, washing feet, uh, drying feet after washing and uh, checking inside of the shoes before wearing them. 80.9% of the patients was taking medication daily as recommended that was either oral drugs or insulin. We assess self-monitoring of blood glucose only among the patients who were on insulin. So 50.7% of them has had not monitored self-monitored blood glucose as recommended. The reason why we checked uh, self-monitoring of blood glucose only among the patients who were on insulin was that American Diabetes Association has uh, recommended self-monitoring of blood glucose as an effective component in treatment for patients who were on insulin and there was no such evidence for patients who were not on insulin. Among the participants, 4% of them were current smokers and all smokers were male 
and this is how the smoking distributed among the males 13% of them only there was only 13% of them who did not smoke so the socio demographic factors associated with self care physical activity healthy diet food care and medication compliance were significantly associated with gender ethnicity income and employment we observed that practice of self care on physical activity healthy diet self monitoring of blood glucose was poor among patients and there were socio economic disparities which affect the level of self care practices so we recommend to reinforce the self care component in the routine diabetes mellitus management with a multidisciplinary approach to ensure the prevention of complications and thereby reduce the burden on the healthcare system due to the rising prevalence of diabetes mellitus so to reduce the morbidity mortality and disability associated with it so let's be diabetes be aware eat right adapt an active lifestyle and take control thank you uh, thank you mrs fernando uh, the paper is now open for questions and discussion for a period of 2 minutes country for instance of diabetes in the southeast asia region yes. number 1 is uh, a region called mauritius who has the prevalence of 22% you said we are upper middle income country i don't know that's true upper middle yes, income we were upper at the now, time the study was done i think we were upper middle yeah really yeah, i think now i think <laughs> now we are low middle we may be low middle income i think and what what percentage of people had their own glucometers were they sharing with the neighbor what percent had their own glucometers Uh, that was a very small percentage, but I'm I can't remember to be exact. But most of them were checking from the hospital as well. You said that you did a systematic sa- sampling. Can you describe that sampling? Uh, we took all the patients who were registered in the clinic, mm-hmm. and uh, the sample size was calculated for a descriptive study. Mm-hmm. So then the uh, sampling interval was taken. divided the total uh, registered patients divided by the uh, 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 sample size the sampling interval was taken and then uh, randomly selected the first among sampling it was three sir mm-hmm. so uh, from the first three randomly selected a number and then every third patient was selected okay uh, can you tell me exactly what connection you saw between the self care features and the demographics i mean what lesson can we take from this study Were there people with a certain demographic which were better on safe care or worse on safe self care? Um, actually, the problem was the sample consisted of most of the females. So, uh, income wise, uh, we got the results. Actually, the no income category, who had no regular income category, had better self care. Mm-hmm. That is because most of the females were housewives. and education level of course the higher education level they had a better self care than the lower education level um and ethnicity uh, our problem was the tamil population was very small so we couldn't really come to a conclusion whether uh, that uh, tamil ethnicity had a lower self care because uh, that was com- actually compatible with the demographic uh, background of the gaul mm. itself because we have a lower tamil population um yeah so low education seem to have a problem on self care yes okay okay thank you uh, i'm sorry i can't give you more time although i'm sure there are much more questions uh thank you mrs fernand mrs fernand